Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite parts of the ID Business Management course, that is sales forecasting. Companies trying to predict how much they're going to sell in the future. Um, I like music. Um, every Friday new music is released, uh, an album or streaming form. Um, and very quickly then what happens is the uh, organization such as Music Week or Billboard or Buzz Angle Music will then produce forecasts for how well an album is going to do in this first week. For major artists like Adele or Taylor Swift, uh, before their CD, before the new albums come out, uh, detailed uh, sales forecasts are produced. And I find that fascinating. I found it fascinating since I was about 13 years of age. So I really enjoy teaching this part of the course. Now, the car industry is going through major changes, right? Moving away from petrol cars to electric cars. And a lot of research has been done about how that industry is going to change. Now, each of these three graphs are taken from The Economist magazine. You should be reading The Economist magazine. It's an exceptionally good, well-informed read. There's no fake news there. All right, so the first graph here, which has been produced by Bank National Paris, uh, that uh, shows that electric car sales are going to increase a little bit by 2025, but you'll notice that sales of petrol cars and diesel cars are going to go down. But they reckon the sales of hybrid cars are going to shoot up. Okay, and the second graph is showing you that due to the decreased uh, cost of producing uh, electric batteries for cars, um, the sales of electric cars are going to increase. Now the first forecast has says that by 2030, 13% of all vehicles in the world will be electric cars. That roughly means that 130 million vehicles in the world will be electric cars, as there's about a billion vehicles in the world uh, in total. All right? But the new forecast has 26% of vehicles will be uh, electric. So that basically means there's 130 million difference um, between the old forecast and the new forecast. This is obviously good news for those companies who are Trying to use electric cars. Other factors which may well affect electric car sales would be maybe there would be more charging points, maybe the cars will be able to drive further, maybe the cars will be able to charge quicker. All right. This final graph is showing you that, however, this is the bad news for car companies is that car production is basically going to stay flat from about 20, uh, 2024 onwards. There's going to be no growth in the total size of the industry. So although those car companies uh, who, who start producing electric cars may gain an advantage, the overall size of the car industry isn't due to increase. Now, where do these sales forecasts come from for cars? Anyway, obviously the car companies will spend a lot of time trying to think into the future what type of cars people are going to want to drive. Banks lend money to car companies, so obviously they want to be able to make sure that the car companies can repay their debt, especially Tesla. Wealth management companies invest in shares um, on stock markets and so obviously they want to invest in companies for whom they think the shares are going to go up. Oil companies obviously have a big vested interest in people who are driving uh, less petrol based cars. Obviously that may affect their uh, the price of oil. All right. Then there are various other organizations who will do uh, research on behalf of companies. So for example, this is the Economist Intelligence Unit, um, and they will do lots and lots of research if you pay them money um, into a particular industry, and then they will prepare a report for it. And that obviously is a sister organization of the Economist magazine. Oops. Not. I also like reading. So I've read this book. It has been uh, turned into a very, very successful movie. But this is uh, September 2017, it came out uh, at the cinema. In July 2017, uh, that's when I first started seeing the forecasts for the movie. And those first forecasts of $40 million for its first weekend. All right? And I thought even then, that was pretty high. But since then, until it's released, the forecast kept increasing, increasing, increasing. And eventually, it took $123 million on its first weekend. Now, this information here has to do with week two. Because generally speaking, what happens in week two is that the movie, uh, less people go to watch the movie. And you can see that here. 
So week two, this this uh, movie came out on Friday the eighth of September. So this is Friday the fifteenth of September. We gone week. Uh, it went down sixty two percent on the uh, Friday to Friday. Saturday to Saturday, we down forty two percent. Sunday to Sunday, forty six percent, etc. etc. So roughly, movies lose fifty percent of their box office in week two. But the good news, this uh, particular column here is day on day. So this is saying that in comparison to Friday, sorry, in comparison to Thursday the 14th of September, the movie did 166% better. All right, and then on the Saturday it increased by another 34%. All right, going from 19 million to 25 million is 34%. But on the Sunday, it went back down to 15 million, so that's about 41%. You'll also notice that on Tuesday, the 27% more people went to watch the movie. And obviously that is because of sales promotions, which are used in America. I think it's a lot cheaper to go to see movies on Tuesday. So, what we can say that movies, most people go to watch movies Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and during the week they go on a Tuesday. If you're going to try and predict the final gross of the film, the general rule of thumb is to take the opening weekend's gross and then times it by 3.5, through to 3.25 to estimate the final gross. Now, uh, The Dark Tower is uh, a book written by Stephen King. He also wrote it. Uh, I haven't read The Dark Tower, it's a set of books. Um, but nevertheless, this movie came out in August uh, 2017. Its early forecast had it down as a, doing about 40 million on its first weekend. It actually did 19 million on its first weekend. So, what factors may affect? how much a uh, movie does at the box office. All right, obviously reviews. The Dark Tower, lots of bad reviews, it had good reviews. Uh, some people think that reviews don't matter. Uh, some people think that Dirty Rotten Tomatoes doesn't matter. Um, other people do. Uh, word of mouth, you tell your friends, it was good, it was bad. Sequels, Come, movie companies make sequels because obviously they think that if Pirates of the Caribbean 1 does a billion dollars worldwide, they think Pirates of the Caribbean 2 will maybe take 900 million because the fans of the first movie will rush out and watch the second movie. So that's why you get so many sequels in the summertime. Movie stars. Some people, Robert Downey Jr., Jennifer Lawrence, many movie companies think if you put those people into the movie, the movie's guaranteed to take 40 million this first week or 50 million this first week. And obviously, uh, the advertising and marketing budget Probably half of the marketing budget for a film is spent in the week before uh, the movie comes out. Okay, so because if the movie doesn't open big, it's going to pretty much disappear in the weeks which follow. Because obviously, new movies come out. Now, then there are other factors to consider about trying to forecast what's going to happen in the future. These are the can common sense things. Ice cream sells more in summer. All right, uh, chocolate sells more around Valentine's Day. That's common sense. Safety political variations which has to do with the economy. If the economy starts doing badly, maybe less people go to restaurants, more people buy foods from uh, the supermarkets and cook at home. All right, so maybe luxury product sales will fall a little bit. And then with the random vari variations, which are harder to predict, things like tsunamis, uh, wars, uh, earthquakes, how will that affect businesses? Because some businesses might uh, benefit, some businesses may not benefit. No. We have a couple of slides left. This is the four part moving average. Uh, if you look at this information here, this information has to do with July 2003 through to July 2017 uh, ticket sales at American cinemas. All right? So you can see pretty much that in 19, sorry, 2003, 191 million people went to the cinema. Um, and by 2017, it had gone to, to 111 million. But during that time, the cinema, during July, went up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Now, how do we establish a trend? Now, the example I want you to do is something called the four part moving average, which is just basically where you take a four year period, you add together the numbers, and you divide by four. So, for example, 2003 to 2006, you add together the numbers, like I've done here. And, and divide by four, so the average of that four year period will be 151.6, and you do it throughout the rest of the four year periods. So, what you may establish then is a better trend. So, the trend here might be that if you're to draw the line of estimate, maybe that movies are becoming less popular. 
Now you may ask yourself, why is that? And maybe it could be because uh, there's less younger people. Younger people quite often make up a large chunk of the, the uh, people who go to the cinema. Also, TV shows like Game of Thrones are, are exceptionally popular. Maybe older people are more inclined to stay at home, watch Game of Thrones, because uh, the production values are so much better. All right, so maybe if you're an investor, then you are thinking uh, it's time for some of the ch cinema changes to close down some of those uh, cinemas. All right. Now, the benefits of doing uh, sales forecasting, if you're thinking about the car companies, the car companies have got to radically change what they're doing. So this will affect their strategic objectives. They've got to move away from petrol to uh, electric. So that means a lot of research and development spending. That money's got to come from somewhere. The production lines have got to be changed. Maybe workers have to be trained. If production lines are changing, maybe a lot of workers will be fired. How you market cars is changing marketing. Companies are emphasizing, obviously, their uh, green, uh, the greenness, all right? Um, if you, your company's prepared detailed sales forecasts alongside business plans, uh, that will help secure finance and investment. If you are someone who, like a convenience store, we have one just across the road here, uh, obviously they will know in summer we stock more uh, ice cream. Winter we stock less ice cream. So that means better stock control. The big limitation of sales forecasting is Tesla in 2017, when I'm making this, can probably break what their sales are going to be in 2018 because it's only one year. It's more difficult to forecast what's going to happen in 2030 because obviously it's a lot further away. All right? So all sales forecasts are based on good information. If you afraid for information going into making a sales forecast, then it's likely to be not even an educated guess. It's just going to be a guess. All right? And obviously there's going to be bias. If petrol companies are making uh, guesses about the future of the car industry and then making that information public, it may well try and overstate how many petrol cars are being sold. Tesla, uh, as an electric car company, they may publicly release information which leans the other way, it's showing electric car sales are going to increase. All right, and now we're going to finish with my own prediction. I don't know the name of the second hit movie. All right, the first hit movie looks like it might do something like 700 million US dollars worldwide. Um, I'm going to say that the second one does not do as well as the first one. I'm going to guess that it will do 25% worse. Because I've read the book, and the more interesting part of the book was the part to do with the kids, not the adults. So I don't think, as an R-rated movie, adults are going to turn out to watch, we want to watch it about adult problems. All right? It's easier to reminisce about being uh, a young person. So that's my prediction. See if I'm right.